Welcome back, Year 10. Uh, so this is our third part where we're going to take some quotations to pieces. Now, I'm going to model this process for you with two quotations. Uh, clearly, for you guys, you should go beyond this. You should be doing four or five. And I look forward to seeing your submissions of this, taken either as a photograph or as your notes, submitted through Share My Homework or sent directly to me by email. So we'll start off, and part of this process is just saying what's going on. So we've got a clear sense of where this quotation sits in context. And the soldiers are on sentry and we definitely get that with waiting if someone's on sentry they're watching okay they're looking out for the enemy the next part of that process which we'll highlight in blue are keywords and features so we have watching i'll do the keywords first that mad word uh, the word tugging wire we've mentioned a few times the synthetic mechanized metal presence made by men Twitching and agonies, these are strong, powerful words, um, and brambles as well. And then in my second, in my next colour, I'll do this in purple, um, we just start adding the features as well. So we hear the mad gust tugging on the wire, personification, and then the simile like twitching agonies of men amongst its brambles. So if we start off with that key word, first of all, watching. Um, so we have, again, I know we've said it before, but they are waiting. Okay, there is, they are waiting. And I'll tell you what's worth adding there is that caesura. We talked before about pausing and halting in this poem, but it is, it is a pause. It is a halt. So they're waiting, they're watching, they are observing. So perhaps the soldiers are able to see things and notice things because they've got to wait for warfare and conflict to arrive for them. Um, and then as we move, start moving forward, we've got this overall personification here. It's as though nature has been driven mad. And this is a mirror image of the soldiers. The soldiers themselves have been driven mad by driven mad by conflict. And we know equally here through that adjective mad in particular, that the the natural world has been distorted as well. And that's really what conflict does. The natural world is distorted and bent out of shape. So we have that coming through really strongly on there. It's worth coming back to our keywords within that personification. The word wire, it's synthetic, it's man-made. So it again disturbs nature and disrupts nature. And we have that word tugging as well. Um, so it's, it's gripping, it's shaking. And it adds to the sense of things being unstable. Um, and we can continue working on this, so let's have a look underneath at this simile, like twitching agonies of men among its brambles. So this is really a development of the first line. It's as though nature's been driven mad, it's a mirror image of the soldiers. So we've got this development, this movement from one line to the next. Um, we imagine men caught in barbed wire. And that was the point of barbed wire, it was... It was to stop you. It was to stop you from moving. It was to stop you making progress on the battlefield. And then would be caught in it and twist in it. Um, it's, it's, it, it, was, it was to stop the movement of an army forward. And that's what it was there for. People would be caught in it and they would not be able to escape. Um, but equally, it's those twitching agonies. Twitching, I mean, it's almost as though, you know, these, the wind itself is becoming exhausted but when something twitches, it's unpredictable as well. And again, that reflects that uncertainty, the anxiety of conflict and warfare. Um, those agonies, again, we can come back here. Um, and the natural world has been harmed and distorted. But equally, and we mentioned this earlier, that transformation of the brambles. So the wire has been transformed to brambles. It's as though... The, the metallic and the synthetic are replacing the natural world. 
So with that, that allows us to move on to our next stage. It allows us to make connections between quotations. So we've got that wire turning into brambles, and that's a nice place to go with this quotation because we've got successive bullets streaking the silence less deadly than the air that shudders black with snow. So we have the bullets that interrupt the silence. But actually, instead of, up as, of, as we have up here, the wire being turned into the natural world, actually Owen is keen to point out that it's the weather that is the most damaging. And it should not be a surprise to us in this quotation to see those S's back again. Sudden successive flights of bullets streak the silence, less deadly than the air that shudders black with snow. So we have that again coming through very strongly. I'll just come away from the yellow pen there. I'll do this in light green so you can see it properly. But it is the quiet, constant and perpetual threat of nature. That is the most damaging. And we know this in this poem. We finish with these eyes turned into ice. Everyone stuck and still and in, and, and in stasis. That said, though, despite all of that, um, these bullets are constant. We suddenly get this constant flow of bullets. And that's reflected in the sibilance being constant um, and in this first line you have lots of sibilant s's but then in this next line there are far fewer um, and you have therefore that quieter presence of nature being that much more threatening that much more damaging you have the return of personification again here that shudders black with snow so the whole of the environment is shaking. It's shivering. So you have in that moment the entire setting struggling and freezing. And I think that's particularly significant. It's that particular damage. It's that particular constant, slow process of freezing over time. So this is what we really should be doing. OK, I'll just take you back through the process because it's the process I want to stress to you here. And I'll just highlight this uh, in red as we go along. We start off by saying what's going on. OK, placing the poem in uh, the context of the poem. So where does it fit in the poem? We look at our key words. We look at our key features, okay, and then we make our connection across the poem to our second quotation. Well, we do the same again. We look at key words, we look at key features, and we're always then going on to comment on the connotations and association. What do those features equal in terms of meaning? What do the keywords equal in terms of meaning? So an example of this, for instance, if I just go back to blue, is these successive flights of bullets. So what does that word successive mean? Well, it's constant. So this word equals constant. It's perpetual. That threat is ceaseless. It's ongoing. So these are the sorts of things that we're thinking about all the time. Now it's your turn to annotate the poem, to analyse closely your quotations. And that's what I'm looking to be submitted from you guys from this lesson for us to have a quick look over and make sure we're on the right track. Um, I appreciate that this is the first of these that we've posted and I'll be interested to hear your feedback. I should imagine the tapping of the, uh, as, I, as I annotate these poems, is going to be a bit of a repeated sound. And certainly I'll be working um, on the technology to deliver this, um, hopefully more slickly in the weeks to come. Um, and as we move forward, I'll be starting to share with you more and more resources over time. Um, I hope that was helpful uh, and I look forward to seeing your work. 
Um, and just a final message, just to really look after yourselves year 10, really make sure that you stay in a healthy routine, getting up as you would do for school normally, working through your lessons, spending time on your lessons and your learning and really taking this opportunity to embed your learning and to also revise key issues as well as adding further additional ideas to the subject knowledge that you already have. If you have any questions, I've put my email address in the task on Share My Homework and also you can add comments on Share My Homework um, if you have any questions and I'll be keeping a close eye on that um, each school day. Thank you very much and I look forward to sharing the next piece of work with you uh, for your next lesson.